What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren. For those of you guys who are new, I go by Locks by Lauren on Instagram. And today I have a nice transformation. So I've been doing a lot of underlight videos, but this one is going to be on a client that has an old balayage. I feel like all my all other like underlight videos, um, I've been doing them on virgin hair or hair that is pretty much solid. So today we're going to be transforming her from something that's pretty dimensional into something more more solid on top and bottom so we're gonna be lightening the underneath and then I'm gonna apply some dark color on the top so to start off well, for my lightener I'm using Schwarzkopf blonde me and I like to start off using 6 and 20 as my first bowl of formula and then after that very first bowl I just use 20 uh, with the lightener and I like to mix that one to two so it gives me like a nice um, medium creamy consistency and I'm taking very thin sections back to back starting at the nape here um, making sure that I'm fully saturating and since she has a previous balayage I am trying to be careful on the pieces that are already light it seems like the underneath here um, she had a lot of dark more uh, it wasn't colored too much so it was a lot easier to re retouch this part but as I get towards the top you'll see later I'll have to pick out some pieces that are previously blonde just to um, help the integrity of the hair and make sure that I don't overlap and over process her hair but because she has some previous color on the ends already I already know that the ends are going to be a little bit stubborn um, I don't know if you guys can tell but in between her balayage pieces, you can see that it's slightly brown compared to her natural hair color. And that's when you know that the last person who did her hair used some permanent color to either like base bump her or make her a little bit lighter. And whenever there's permanent color on the hair, it just makes it a lot harder to lift um, compared to like virgin hair. What I mean by that is it just takes a little bit longer for those pieces to get as light um, as her virgin hair. So since she has that permanent color on the mids and ends, the root area will probably lighten a lot easier than the ends and I've already expressed to her that um, her ends might take a few sessions to get completely solid and even. So I'm just going in with one formula. Um, so the ends might lift a little bit warmer than the root area and then once I get everything pretty much solid, we'll address all of those warm spots in her second session. So as I get towards the front here, um, before I apply the color and I section out my client's hair, I always ask where they want to see the color because since this is an underlight, the color is on the underneath. So sometimes some clients want it a little bit higher, some clients want it a little bit more hidden. So we predetermine that before I start applying the color. And for her, she did want to see um, the color when she wears her hair down. So we are taking this underlight a little bit further up and typically we I will do it right around eyebrow level and sometimes even closer to the temple if they really want to see a bit more color around their face. So here I'm just taking again very thin slices and trying to pick out any pieces that are like super blonde. If it's more so like a level maybe like six, seven and below, I will go ahead and just put lighter on it. But anything with like a level eight and above, I definitely picked out because I felt like it probably wouldn't be able to take all the lightning and then later when she comes back in and she still has like some warm spots um, in her mids and ends I will go ahead and lighten those up when I redo her roots but I do this because I want to um, preserve like 
her hair uh, integrity of her hair and I don't want to like over process it at all so I address the darkest parts first and then once everything is pretty much light I'll go back in and touch up the pieces that are not as light later So since my client has a lot of like highlights and like a darker brown in between on the top of her mids and ends from her previous color, I'm going in and I'm going to darken it up. I'm using the Pulperite Liquid Demis and I chose to use the 3-0 which is pretty much black and um, I'm just going in after I've already foiled her whole head and applying the Liquid Demi on it. Since this is a demi permanent hair color, it will fade. So when she comes back in for a touch up, I expect the 3-0 to fade back to sort of a brown. It probably won't fade as light as she is now, but something pretty similar because it is a demi permanent. And the reason why I chose to use a demi permanent over just like a normal permanent color is in case she down the line wants to change her hair color. I don't typically like to put permanent color on my client's hair at all unless I'm like covering gray because if by chance they ever change their mind down the line it just makes my life a lot easier to um, lighten them up if I've only used a demi permanent versus a permanent color. And I do explain all of the color terms to my clients before applying the color on them. Like I do give them the option whether they want me to use permanent color or demi permanent. And most people prefer the demi permanent in case they do want to change up their hair later because a 3-0 is pretty much black. And if I were to use that in the permanent color, it would be like nearly impossible for her to go back to blonde considering she has like some blonde pieces in there with some um, color treated hair color that's permanent brown in there as well weaved in and it would be really impossible to get her back to blonde if I used a permanent on top of that and she ever wanted to go lighter in the future so I always like to think of head and prepare and let my clients know what maintenance would be like and how things will fade after um, about like six to eight weeks So after I applied the liquid demi on the top, um, her foils in the back were already ready. So I went ahead and rinsed those out and then I sectioned them out below the bowl. So you can't see them in the bowl right now because the blonde pieces that I've already rinsed out from her foils are underneath the bowl. And then I bring out the 3-0 like the black color that I put on top and rinse that out separately um, because this color is technically black so I want to be super careful you can see the water is like pretty dark so if I were to rinse that directly on top of the freshly blonde hair and without sectioning it apart the blonde would definitely get pretty dark so this is just a helpful tip to preserve the blonde on the underneath while mix uh, rinsing out the black on top So once I rinse out all of the black that was on the top, I clip that up and then I start to rinse out the foils that are pretty much ready. You can see I lifted her to about a level 9 and 10 and her ends do still have a little bit of warmth because she had all of that dimension from her previous balayage. For my toner formula on the underlight part, I will be using the Pulperite Rapid Toners and these are my go-to for like silvers um, and gray tones because one, they process very quickly and I love that they have just straight pigment without any like background tone or like level to it. Um, obviously these toners, they kind of work best on levels like eight through 10, depending on how, mi how you mix them ratio wise with your six volume. Um, so today I'm gonna be mixing up the silver, icy and violet. And for my gray formulas, I always, always use silver and violet because I always prefer a slightly more violet gray than a blue gray gray which is um, the regular silver on its own is a little bit more blue based so I add the purple in there so that it fades a little bit nicer but I decided to add in some icy just to keep it a little bit on the lighter side as I mix this up 
I would say my ratio would have been like if I were mixing up 50 grams of color, I would do 20 of silver, 20 of violet, and then 10 of the icy just to dilute it a little bit. And then with the six volume, I do mix it one to two color to developer. So when I apply the toner, I always apply starting in the back for my underlay. I apply on the root all over, and on these pieces though, since after I do the whole root, I go back and um, before applying it everywhere on the mids and ends, I started to like slightly pick out the warmer pieces in the mids and ends that didn't lighten all the way to level 9 and 10. And then I went back in to tone the mids and ends all over. And then I let this process for about maybe like 7 to 10 minutes before I rinse it out with cold water. Alrighty guys, so here is my end result. I let the toner get a little bit more on the gray side because of course she had some warmth on the mids and ends and I was really trying to mask them with the toner. But you can see how beautiful and glossy and shiny the liquid demi made the top of her hair. It is like the perfect like dark dark brown almost black tone on the very top and it gives the most beautiful contrast against the silver gray on the bottom and she was totally fine with the bottom getting a little bit on the darker side and more pigmented i expressed her that it would probably last her a lot longer um and yeah it's gonna fade super pretty she just has to maintain it with like some purple shampoo but i told her to come back in within like 12 weeks to touch up the root of her underlight. Um, since the underlight is more of a solid color, it is crucial to come back in and not wait too long to touch up the root because if you wait too long, um, the hair does start to grow uneven. And if the root is too long, it's very hard to retouch a solid um, slice when the hair is grown out too much because the hair grows uneven. So I always tell my clients to come back in a little bit sooner just to prevent any banding or breakage or anything like that because the underneath is so solid. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in to this week's episode and I will talk to you guys next week.